Hello and welcome to another TLDR US video. In Portland, Oregon, violent tactics from federal officials and regular clashes between law enforcement and protesters have grabbed the attention of many, and this situation only seems to be heating up. So today, we're going to break down this situation, how we got here, what's actually happening on the streets, and whether or not it seems to be working. If you want to support this channel and the independent content we're creating, then be sure to back us on Patreon. Your donations make this channel possible and help us make more videos every single week. In return, you'll get a whole bunch of perks, from behind the scenes posts to the ability to vote on video topics and even early access to videos. In fact, our video on a potential TikTok ban is already live for patrons. Find out more by clicking the link in the description. In order to understand how we got to where Portland is today, we're going to need a bit of context. Over the past few months, protesters in Portland, like in so many other cities, have taken to the streets to speak out against a system of racism that has long oppressed black America. It's worth noting here that the vast majority of those protesters are peaceful, and while extremists setting fire to things tend to get the most news coverage, they're not the most representative of the majority of protesters. However, like in every other city, these protesters tend to all get lumped together, and have very often been met by violence from local law enforcement. Sometimes the police's intervention is provoked by graffiti, sometimes by a thrown water bottle, and sometimes by seemingly nothing at all. This, however, is not unique to Portland, so why did the federal government single out this city in particular? Basically, Portland provided a perfect storm of modern and historical significance. Not only is Portland a major city experiencing significant protests, it's also had a long history with disproportionate extremism. Oregon has always, for a series of complicated historical reasons, been home to a large number of ideologically extreme groups, featuring everything from anarchists to communists to Nazis to, yes, even Antifa. As such, the city provided the perfect staging ground for the deployment of the Department of Homeland Security Rapid Deployment Teams, which have recently been ramped up in response to the President's orders to protect federal property, specifically statues and monuments, as well as buildings like police precincts and courthouses. And so, thousands of federal officers were sent to Portland. This, it should be noted, is an incredibly unusual move as federal officers acting within states without local permission has previously been viewed as a federal overreach. Despite this, federal deployment has become increasingly common this year, so much so that a Wikipedia page titled 2020 Deployment of Federal Forces in the United States has even been created. And in Portland when they were, things got messy almost immediately. While some Oregon demonstrators had been violent, the protesters were, as previously noted, largely peaceful and sometimes even fun affairs, including dancing, singing and the occasional barbecue. When the DHS unit showed up though, things got a lot messier. Truckloads of officers decked out in camo gear were deployed throughout the city and quickly began using tactics far beyond those of normal law enforcement. Perhaps most notably, DHS troops seem to have taken to throwing peaceful protesters into unmarked vans for no apparent reason. Numerous stories have been covered by local Oregon media in which a protester or onlooker was taken in by the DHS. Other times, the officers simply deploy tear gas and crowd control munitions. In one instance, an officer fired a rubber bullet, which isn't meant to be shot directly at people, directly into a protester's face. The protester, 26-year-old Donovan Labella, was standing with a boombox above his head and posed no threat to anyone. His skull was fractured and had to be repaired with intensive surgery. US Marshals later put out a statement saying that they would investigate the incident. Federal troops, however, have continued attacking protesters, now even including the city's mayor. In the early hours of Thursday morning, Mayor Ted Wheeler went to the streets to talk to protesters. While he was in the crowd, a group of federal officers began spraying tear gas at demonstrators. Wheeler later said that he saw nothing to promote the use of gas. Somewhat ironically, Wheeler had largely been seen by the protesters as an enemy, and has been criticised by activists for failing to rein in the Portland police. In fact, his unpopularity was largely why he went into the crowd in the first place. In that crowd though, he was just another civilian being gassed. And journalists aren't safe either. 
Eddie Binford Ross, for example, has been covering the protests for a local paper and has been tear gassed nightly, threatened at gunpoint and physically attacked by federal officers. All this despite the fact that the local paper she's working for is her high school newspaper. She's 17. She is, of course, though, not alone in this danger. One of the reoccurring themes in this situation is that American streets have been a danger to journalists, be it from extremist factions of the protests or from law enforcement itself. As the situation has gone on, more and more people have begun calling for the removal of federal troops. 14 big city mayors signed a letter to Attorney General Bill Barr and Acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf, demanding they withdraw federal troops from American cities. At the same time, numerous legal figures have called for similar actions, asserting that the quasi-authoritarian tactics of many federal law enforcement officers are both unjustified and unconstitutional. One of the loudest voices came from Judge Andrew Napolitano, who authored a Fox News op-ed where he accused federal troops of acting in a way that was unlawful, unconstitutional and harmful. He went on pointing out that the First Amendment to the Constitution requires the government to protect speech, not assault those who exercise it. His conclusion? This is how totalitarianism begins. This, of course, is just one voice. There are figures, most notably within the federal government, who argue that this sort of action is necessary to bring order to cities. After all, some people arrested have legitimately broken the law. However, if this is the goal, federal authorities have missed the mark by a long shot. The one thing that most journalists on the streets in Portland can agree on is that federal troops have escalated, not ended the violence. Numerous reports have emerged in the last couple of weeks of an increase in violence as federal officers attempt to rein in anyone and everyone on the streets. Despite this, acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf defended his department's action calling the people on the streets of Portland violent criminals and asserting that the troops had done nothing wrong. And the protests themselves seem to have gotten larger since the U.R. agents went in. Uh, are they actually inflaming the situation? No, absolutely not. What we know is before DHS law enforcement, civil law enforcement officers arrived in Portland, the mayor is on record as saying that the city is on, it, it has a certain level of violence. It's been, it was ongoing for, well for a month before we arrived. The mayor has been very outspoken on that. So just as it was before DHS arrived, it was very violent and it continues to be very violent. Mr. Secretary, the, the Oregon Attorney General said that masked federal agents have arrested people on streets far from the courthouse with no probable cause and whisked them away in unmarked cars. Is that accurate? It's not accurate. Again, we continue to uh, battle misleading headlines and just inaccurate reporting. So again, we have uh, a, a a uh, direction from not only the Congress, but it's in federal statute. We protect that courthouse and we have the ability to make arrests uh, on individuals that are committing criminal acts. Now Meanwhile, in Portland. What are you doing? Use your words. What are you doing? Use your words. What are you doing? Use your words. What is going on? Who are you? NLG will get you out. What's your name? What's your Tell name? us your name. What's your name? Okay, you're fine. We'll get you out. Bro, what? Our... We got you, friend. We got you. NLG. You just violated their rights. Oh, kidnapping people. You just violated their rights. There have been multiple videos similar to this circulating around the internet seeming to show federal officers detaining people who weren't engaged in any sort of violence, exactly what the acting secretary said the officers weren't doing. Needless to say, this isn't a particularly flattering position for the DHS, nor is it particularly reassuring for those who argue that this is only not constitutional, but instead constitutes an abuse of power. In summary, things haven't gone well. They haven't gone well for Washington in its attempts to stop the violence. They haven't gone well for state leaders in their attempts to retain clear authority. And they certainly haven't gone well for those on the streets, simply trying to make their voices heard. The federal government, however, does not appear to be standing down, with plans to surge troops into multiple other cities in the future. Washington, if anything, seems to be ramping up, no matter the consequences.
As for what happens next, we'll just have to wait and see. If you want to be kept up to date as this situation unfolds, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. And a special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name listed at the end of the videos and get early access to our videos, like the new TikTok video, then be sure to check out our Patreon in the description.